And now it's a debate, you know, just about every parent at some point sits down and faces this one. How many children should we have? Well, whether it's one child or multiple children, figuring out just how many works best, big issue, many families face it. And here to help us and parents out there make the decision, Dr. Susan Newman, a psychologist, best-selling author of the book, Parenting an Only Child. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good Thanks to be here. Thanks for being here. So uh, I guess you go with what you know. Uh, I was an only child till 17, and I loved it. You had sister. I had five kids. Five, five kids, kids in, in our family. family. I was the ignored middle child, which is why. So you know. do you find in your research that it's the expectation is set by your own history? It's set by your own history because you don't know, really know what another family's like. So you think what you had is the best. Or if it was terrible, for example, one person I interviewed was, uh, had seven siblings. He was the oldest. And he was in charge of the bath. He was in charge of being sure they got to bed. He said, no way. And he has an only child. So you could have a backlash. But in general, you like what you grew up with. It's what you know you feel comfortable with. And you want to duplicate it. Obviously, this is a profoundly personal question as to how many children. But, but I find it's a point of conflict between spouses often. Like, I, I think, well, more the merrier. Chaos is good. And my husband's <laughs> like, no, we're going to be outnumbered. Keep it to two boys. It's perfect. There's an awful lot of testosterone in our family. You're right going to have to go to a team zone defense exactly, if you have another exactly. one. Yeah, but you're wagering you're going to have a girl, and you can't do that because sometimes you get four boys, you get four girls. Uh, don't count on it. Yeah, you know my my argument. My wife is going on a motion. She, she, you know, she's got, she has a sister, but it's the emotion of wanting to be a mommy again mm -hmm. so much. And I'm all about the logic involved in this decision, right? That things are great the way they are right now. Why mess it up? Why triple our work? Because it's not, it's exponential, the work. Oh, work, absolutely. Yes? Two or tw not twice as much work. There's three times as much work. And three, you're quadrupling or more. How does that happen? Well, because you need to spread your time more. Uh, so, and you're reducing your couple time for sure. I you know, love the idea factor. that when you go from two to three, you're creating a middle child, and that's a problem that you really have to focus you on. You absolutely, because the middle child doesn't have the privileges of the older child, isn't baby like the baby, and there you have this middle child caught with nothing, no privileges, no special attention. So parents need to focus and say, okay, I have, really have to pay attention to this middle child. And for those who argue that it's companionship for the little one, I would argue that you could have a Cain and Abel. They could hate each other. <laughs> oh, from the minute a new baby arrives in the house and the older child's dethroned, that's the, gen the, the nucleus of sibling rivalry. And as you probably know, it can go on for decades and a lifetime and you can be best friends. You don't, it's a, you don't know what you're going to get, so you have to be careful. I see it goes from night to day in a blink of an eye, though, because one minute they're playing beautifully and they're each other's best friends, and the next thing you know, it's World War III. Yeah, and what it really boils down to is that the two partners have to decide what they want. You can't be influenced by the Joneses or having their fourth child. You have to be, say, okay, do we want a calmer household? What can we afford? Because if you're a happy parent, it's right. not the number of siblings, it's your parenting style that really affects the outcome of your child. And finally, your, your science on the only children out there, those of us were not completely maladjusted, self-centered idiots, <laughs> or... Uh, Absolutely okay, not. Good. That's 1800s his, um, research that was really flawed, and it's quite the opposite. With all the parenting information available, only children, when you do these tests and new tests, do very well. They're happy, they're well-adjusted. Uh, they're no different than, it, they have a slight edge academically and a slight edge in happiness department long term, but they're just the same as any other child with siblings. Yes. I just want to say something, Angela. There are now three in this marriage and I'm <laughs> voting with you. Oh, I'm <laughs> Done. I, I'm rooting for Angela, too. How could I? Yeah, well, let's face it. It's an argument I will lose. <laughs> Don't be pressured. No, You're no. You're being pressured. I, I, Outside I, influence. I'm coming over to that side as well. But <laughs> you've helped us decide here, and hopefully you as well, right? Absolutely. Maybe we'll just take one of your boys, and you can have another. Okay, fine. All so right. that's a deal. <laughs> it's a loner system. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Dr. Newman. We appreciate it.